Hey everybody, I'm here at Daryl's Garden, also known as Bamboo Oasis. Be sure and check out the other videos that I've shot here at Daryl's Garden. We just got through pruning his grapevines. Well, he did. He showed us how he does it. And I thought as long as I was here, I might show you what his garden looks like towards the end of February and what his plans are to get ready for the next gardening season. This man has been gardening for 45 years and he, how, how many years here at this? Uh, 20, about 20. And, and about 20 years on this property. So he has a real good sense of what needs to get done when. So we're gonna do that, so don't go anywhere. Well, the garden doesn't look so great in February, you know, but this is really the time of year. If, you, if you're planning on gardening next year, you should really already have done some things, but there's still time, like adding manure or compost or something to your beds or just, you know, making new trellises, getting things ready for the upcoming season. So what I'm doing, uh, this, I actually expanded this bed this fall and I'm, I'm building this rock wall out here. So it's, it's a lot bigger bed than it was. I moved everything out a bit. And if you recall, I have a problem with ground ivy growing here. So it's a real issue uh, later in the year. Uh, you don't see it so much right now. But uh, one of my ways to deal with ground ivy, besides weed eating it out of the way, <laughs> is uh, mulching it heavily and smothering it out, either with hay mulch or wood chips, or in this case, uh, this bed I have just put, uh, this is composted horse manure. I had a huge pile of horse manure. I left it sit for a whole year and it's composted down to just beautiful soil now. I put this in here, I don't know, three, four inches thick. And uh, uh, this was one of the beds that I did not put manure on last year. That one and, and one up there. Everything else I manured last year. So I think I'll be good for a couple years with that. Potatoes in here this year. Mm -hmm. uh, all around the teepee will be potatoes. And then of course the teepee I grow my beans on. So I'll have probably two varieties of beans growing there. Um, and this, hopefully, this, this heavy application of manure will pretty well smother out the ground ivy for, for quite a while. I mean, it'll always come back, but, uh, you know, it's not going to be a real problem in early spring. And, and since I'm planting potatoes, this bed's just going to be easy because I'll just come in here with a hoe. And, you know, I don't really bury my potatoes much. Sometimes I do the root stout thing and just lay them right on the surface. But I'll, I'll probably dig a little shallow trench, set them in, tuck the soil up on them, and then cover them heavily with, with uh, hay mulch. And I'll be done here. Uh, I don't think I'll have any weed problems once I've done that. And the potatoes, they'll shoot up through that hay mulch. And, you know, next thing I need to do is dig potatoes and eat them. Now, this soil is very soft, so the potatoes can grow down in it, right? Right, right. So they, Yeah, they can. But if you add the mulch, more and more mulch on top, then they'll grow up in that mulch instead of way down deep where you got to dig for them. Keep the mulch tucked up so there's just a little bit of potato vine showing. Tell me about, uh, are these your worm bins? Yeah, this is a, this was from, Kay, Kay did a video talking about this one time and I thought, that's awesome. I came right out and made myself three of them. Uh, you know, I, I think the soil insulates it, so I think I get composting action a little later and then again earlier in the spring mm -hmm. than if I just had it piled up somewhere. Somehow I would think you'd have tons of worms in all of this anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. Because it looks so rich. Well, when I was digging the horse manure, I came across a whole lot of big, fat, white, juicy grubs, which I collected and gave to the chickens, which they were thrilled. I bet. Okay, now this bed, uh, I had good manure on this last year. I don't feel like I need to add manure this year. Uh, I only grew a few peppers and some squash plants here, so, you know, I think there's plenty of fertility here. But you see, already, end of February, I got grass and mints and there, all kinds of weeds are growing up here. So what I'm going to do is just cover this thickly with hay. Nothing else and enough that I think I can smother these weeds out. And then I, I, I make little maps at this time of year for each of my beds to plan out what I'm going to plant because I do rotate things around, change it up every year. And I can't remember what I was going to plant here, but anyway, uh, you know, whatever's going in here, I think I can just separate the hay and, and plant them in. I just, I can't remember what I was going to put here right now, but, um, yeah. But how much time transpires between you putting the hay on and you actually planting? Well, you know, let's say I'm planting peppers or tomatoes or, you know, squash or something like that here. I, I just don't remember what it was. Uh, I'm not going to be putting, the, you know, I'll start them indoors, you know, soon. It's too, too early still. 
Uh, but you know, it's going to be. I aim for the, the like the last week of April, if the weather's in my favor, and I know I might have to wait into May for a bit if it's not. And so that's I shoot for that to be able to put my transplants out, like tomatoes and peppers and things, because probably done with frost. Do you actually start? Because I always heard that squash seeds do not like to be transplanted. No, I don't. Yeah, no, I plant direct on the squash. Oh, okay. Cool. I was thinking pepper and tomato. Right, know. right. Okay. But, but you know. You uh, said you'd already started your peppers. I well, I started them extra early just because I'm going to probably pot them up into a bigger pot, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to have a head start with them because so, it's usually late August before I get my first pepper. I know. <laughs> it's a, such a long wait. Yeah. So. Watermelons too. Yeah. It's like everything comes in at yeah, once. Yeah, I'm going to start watermelon early. I didn't start them already, but I, I am going to give an early start on them. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So Tell I, me about this new trellis up here. I'm excited about that. Okay. Well, this is just uh, basically two cattle panels that were made into an arch. And uh, what, I, what I did with this one, I, I, I was telling you it was something different down there. I, I regret that I did it already. But... I cut the bottom wire going across off on each side and then used those to ram down in the soil and hold it in place. Stab it. Mm -hmm. And then I just used some bamboo stakes in the ground to kind of make it more rigid on the sides so it would get up and make that arch. Uh-huh. Um, but really for, for this kind of trellis or even just a long straight trellis or something, I, I, I've learned that it's a hassle if, if your fencing material comes all the way down and meets the soil because that's where weeds are going to be growing oh, and you can't yeah. get at them with a hoe very easily and I, I don't like to weed I think it's a complete waste of time that's why I use so much mulch and everything I hardly ever weed but that's where I weed when I do is right along those fence lines so what I've learned and I didn't do it on this one but I'm getting ready to make a whole big long arch like this in my lower garden and I'm going to raise the bottom of it I'm not going to cut the bottom wire and have them poke in the ground I'm going to put metal fence posts in the ground and then raise that fencing a good six inches or so off the soil surface and wire it onto those posts so it stays above the soil. You can get your then weed you can eater. Get, you can get in there with a hoe and clean things up. And you can put your mulch in and totally seal it off then. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is going to be cucumbers this year. I'm going to try to make a bunch of dill pickles. So I've got to get a bunch of dill going. And hopefully, i got four different kinds of cucumbers. Hopefully a few of them will do real good. And they all vine, I mean they all... Yeah, these are all climbing cucumbers, climbing. yep. And then you've got manure just on the outside where you're going to plant them. That's where I'll plant them, and everything else is wood chips. And I, I really like using wood chips for your walking paths and things like that, because you put a three or four inch layer of them down, and they'll probably last you throughout the whole garden season without having to deal with weeds. And what happens is, I mean, it, just having the wood chips there all around, it creates a, a moist environment that, you know, the soil doesn't dry out as fast. So having wood chips all around those cucumber plants out that distance is going to keep that soil moisture in better for them. Yeah. And then, of course, the wood chips break down and, you know, you're, you're attracting all kinds of soil organisms in there that are healthy for, for making better soil. Mm -hmm. So I, I love using the wood chips. And, uh, you know, you hear a lot of... People say, oh, you can't use wood chips. It'll take some nitrogen away from the soil. And Well, I mean, I don't till fresh wood chips into the soil. Uh, and I don't, that may take nitrogen away, but that's, even that's up in the air right now from what I've been learning lately. But I don't worry about the wood chips on the surface, you know, and just, mm -hmm. you can use hay up against your plants and then wood chips everywhere else and you don't have to do any weeding. I mean, that's anything to make it easier as you get older. I mean... Absolutely. If you want an easy gardening method, find yourself a copy of Ruth Stout's <laughs> No Work Garden Book. That I read that back in the early 1970s, whenever she, when it first came out, I guess. And that transformed me. I was like, I'm sold on that because that, that imitates nature. You know, that's what happens in the forest. All that mulch falls with the fall leaves, it coats the ground, they rot down, it builds the soil, holds the moisture in, all that. I was like, that's how nature works. That, that's how you should garden. And so I, I, I'm a heavy mulcher. I believe in mulching big time. <laughs> in case you guys missed it, you'll be sure, uh, I'll put the link above so you'll be sure and see that video. But this was basically a tree that died, right? No, it didn't die. Uh, oh, you... Uh, it's just, it was a big cedar tree. It was shading a lot of my garden beds. Oh, right. I was wanting to expand the garden out beyond it. 
And so I just incorporated it into the garden. I cut all the branches off and I don't know how long it'll stand here, probably 15, 20 years before it falls over. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, so I'm, I'm making use of it. And, and the other one out front, same story. And you said you're going to come over to my place and, and we're going to do that. We got to get you a teepee set up, but you got to pick a place now. It's I nice it if it's a level place. I got it figured out. Okay. All right. The last time you were here, it was the summertime. These banana plants are just gigantic. They were probably 15 feet tall, something at that time. Uh, if not then, they were a little bit later. And, you know, I love them for the tropical look. Um, I'm amazed at the biomass that's produced in one season, which you can chop up and put in your compost if you want. I, I just kind of mulch the banana plants in. But this is uh, year number four, I believe, maybe year number five that I've had these here. And I'm now realizing that there is a negative to these things. Do you see, what I wanted here was, look at that one, you can see three main stalks, the big fat ones, right? Uh -huh. That's all I really wanted. And of course, the way bananas grow, they always send up little side shoots and you can dig them out and transplant them or sell them or whatever, or you can just chop them out of the way. And that's what I usually do now lately and just let the energy go to the main three stalks. But if you, if you dig down in there, these things are, it's, can you imagine a gigantic potato or apple or something? It's like sort of that consistency. You can just chop into it and it's real moist and white and it's solid. Okay, so this is a massive root down here and it spreads. Now, I never had any intention of letting it start to go down the bank. So this spring, I gotta, uh -oh. I gotta dig all these roots out. And I, you know, Ooh. I don't know if I leave a fragment, is that still gonna grow? I, I don't know what's gonna happen, but you know, I'm okay. happy to have this, but I don't want all this extra. Plus it's going to, when you start digging on that hillside, it'll compromise your hillside, Well, right? I'll have to fill all that back in. And, all and, this, and this one's even worse. Look how much this one has spread. And you know, I, I had wow. four, I had two close and two far apart. I had four main ones going here. And all these others were ones I really don't want there, and I, I should dig out or, or something. Now, Daryl, you had me plant that plant that banana plant in my backyard. Yep, and it's going to take now it'll take over your whole yard and your house, and it'll <laughs> buckle your house. And now I'm just joking. <laughs> what have you done? Okay, tell me about your. Well, this is new. I mean, I, I'm just realizing this in the past year. I was like, man, this thing's getting away from me. And yeah. and, and like the one I have up there beside the chicken yard is fairly close to my rock wall. Well, if it keeps expanding out toward the rock wall, it'll I can't even see wall. it. Where is it? Yeah, it's all chopped down. <laughs> oh, oh okay, okay. See where that window's laying? It's like right in front of that window. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, I usually have a big banana plant right there, but I got to make sure it stays a good distance away from the rock wall or it'll buckle that out. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. All right, so down the hill here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look that great, but this is all important stuff to me. Okay, now you can see my bales of hay, round bales of hay. Mm -hmm. that we're not sprayed, you know, it's good hay, and so I'm using that for mulch. And I bought that last summer and knowing that I would need hay in the spring this year So I went ahead and bought it. So it's there. I don't have to worry about going out and finding it right now And there's a, a little bit left a, a pile of wood chips. It's a lot bigger than that I'm starting to use them and over here is about that's about one-fourth of what used to be there That was a huge mound of horse manure that, mm. that composted down mm -hmm. and that pile beside it is a mixture of horse manure and fall leaves mm. which also has composted down and looks identical to that they really look like the same thing mm -hmm. so i hope to have all that put in my garden this year i, I mean I'm, I'm working little by little getting that out of there yeah, yeah i got an electric wheelbarrow which uh you just that's your new toy oh man i'll tell you that thing's awesome uh, and, and, you know, I mean, I, I'm a hard worker and I, I mean, I would you know, I'd move rocks around and stuff with a regular wheelbarrow and they're heavy and I'm used to doing it. But when, when you're taking stuff uphill and it's heavy, it just takes it out of me so much. And so I thought, you know, that electric wheelbarrow would really save my back and save me a lot of time. And I can get about two and a half regular wheelbarrow loads in this big hopper of this thing. And it's effortless. I just turn the handle and follow it. Well, you wanted me to get one, but yeah, it, it, I, I didn't really want to incredible. spend the money. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's expensive, but it, it's going to, over time, I think it's going to be well worth it for me. It's going to let me get a lot more done with, without hurting so much. Mine haven't opened up that much. But then mine don't get that direct of sun where they're yeah, planting. Yeah, that's why these are coming. I, I got a bunch back up my spring, and they haven't started yet. Oh, those are lovely. All right, here's uh, another bed I have out front, my other teepee where I grow beans. 
this bed I mentioned in another video this bed is has no soil in it so it's all compost I, that I've put in here when I originally filled the bed it was just pure compost but the soil it has settled and this year like it was down a good five or six inches below the top of the rock wall so I filled that up but that's the composted horse manure I've got a good five or six inches in here Wow and, and I smothered out all the weeds again you know and this is also going to have potatoes doing potatoes around the teepees both places this year and two kinds of beans on the teepee so pretty soon I'll come out here and get those potatoes planted mulch that in and I'm done didn't we say oh it was Tom that was saying uh, he's planting potatoes on the 19th when are you planting I mean you, you know if you're putting them underground a little and then especially if you're mulching heavily over them you could probably do it any time now, you know, because they, you know, they're protected in that soil, that soil temperature. That's why I'm digging the trench, just to get a little bit of soil on them, and I'm going to cover them right away with with the uh, hay, and so okay. they'll be protected, and and they'll sit there and wait until they determine it's the right time to start growing. But are you waiting till they have sprouts? Well, I I, I can show you what I'm doing inside with okay. my potatoes, how I have that set up already. To, okay. You know, so they're getting ready over the next few weeks. Because I just bought 20 pounds of potatoes yesterday, but they don't have any sprouts on them. Okay. Are they organic ones, right? I got them from the co-op. Uh, see, if you, if you don't buy organic potatoes, all the potatoes that are sold except organic ones are, I think it's a soak, they soak them, I think, or maybe it's a spray, but it's an it's a, a inhibitor to, for sprouting. That's why, you know, the, so, you know, those potatoes are probably set to, and let, or were they seed potatoes? Yeah, they're supposed to be. Oh, if they're seed potatoes, then they didn't do that. I'm talking about just, you know, eating potatoes you buy in a store. No, I got them from the co-op. They're seed potatoes. Seed potatoes. Well, you'll be okay. I mean, they're not organic, but they're not, they're, they'll, they won't be having So would I plant them before they have sprouts or no? You could. You could. And uh, then they'll just do it when they feel like yeah, it. Yeah, most okay. likely. Yeah. Okay. All right, now this bed, uh, I still have the whole rock wall to build around it like that one. And I had these really big rocks when I had the skid steer here. I just set these in place. But I'm going to have to, you know, manhandle them and maneuver around a little bit and, and place other rocks in there to make a nice wall. And when I do, then I'll fill this out to the rock wall. So I'm probably just going to fill this gap with a bunch of wood chips this year so it doesn't get all weedy. And up here I had, you see how thick the weeds are on this slope. That's how it was all up in there. Mm -hmm. And I put a thick coating of the horse manure on, and I don't know how well that's going to inhibit those weeds. If it doesn't do a good job, then I will rototill it right before I, I'm planting corn here this year. Mm. Okay, now I, I have given up on planting corn on my place for many years, and I even thought about building an expensive corn cage to keep the animals out, but it, it's just prohibitively expensive to do that, uh, especially with the prices that have changed here recently. But what I'm going to do, since this is away from the woods a bit, where the squirrel lives, he's on the back side of the house, uh, and I just have the bamboo out here, <clears throat> I'm going to try it. Just growing corn, and uh, I'm going to set live traps for the squirrel when it gets about that time he's going to get interested in it. And then when it, if I make it to almost harvest time, then I leave a radio play at night. It'll be easy here on the porch. I can just plug it in even. And you play a radio, I'll leave the porch lights on. I might take a few gas cans and loosen the lid a little and just kind of set them around here. The deer don't like that smell. So I can keep deer and raccoons away by scaring them with the sound. It's worked in the past, but it only works for a few days. If, if you're going to try to do it for a week or so, they'll, they'll figure it out. Mm. So you're hoping to catch the perfect time to harvest it just by using these methods? Yeah. I mean, I'll be watching when it's almost harvest time. Of course, the, the deer and the raccoons do just like people with corn. They go up and they will peel it back and inspect it because <laughs> I found that evidence. I knew I didn't do that. You know, some critter did that. I didn't do that. And so they're looking just like we do. And they wait. They're patient. And they, they want to eat it at the right time just like we do. But squirrels... Squirrels are nuts. They're crazy. The, 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 the corn is just starting to grow. Little ears with no kernels or anything about that long. And they come in and eat them up. Oh. So, you know, you don't have a chance with the squirrels. That's why I'll be, I'll be trying to trap them and get them out of here early on. And Daryl, when I was driving up, the only green thing on your road out front is the bamboo. <laughs> this is the end of February, and look how beautiful and green it is. Wow. It stays that way all year. It doesn't freeze? 
No, it, I mean, these varieties, I selected these varieties to be able to take the winter temperatures we get around here. Now look, there, you see the brown up there? Yeah, I saw that. That's a freeze, yeah. but those leaves will fall off and new green ones will come back in the spring. They'll send up new ones. When the wind's really whipping, and these bamboo, they just sway so much, and it's just so beautiful to watch the bamboo out here. I love it. This is our view out the front window. This is what I see. So. You need to plant the bamboo in front of the wire. <laughs> I know, I know. I hate that. I could. And, and you know, I, I even asked them. I had a couple that were leaning out on that wire, and I said, is that going to be a problem? And they said, nah, don't worry about it. And those big wires, that's just the communication wires. That's the Internet and stuff. You yeah. Know, electric yeah. wires are way up high. Yeah. All right, this is my second year to do potatoes this way. I never used to, I used to chip them, cut them into pieces with a few eyes on each piece, that kind of thing. But I tried this last year and I had the best results I ever had with potatoes. I don't know if it was because I did this or it was just good weather, but I'm going to try it again this year to find out. And all you're going to do is you pick a potato and you'll see on one end there's where a, where a stem used to be attached. And then everywhere else is where sprouts come up. So you take that and put that down. And then so you basically have all your sprouting side of the potato facing up. And I let them sit here where they get a little bit of light from outside. It's a north window. They're not getting much light. But they start to sprout. And I mean, I could, I could put them out now or, you know, I'll probably wait a week or two. I don't know. But soon I'll be putting these out. And then I mulch them in good. If you get real cold weather, they'll be protected in the soil and under the mulch. They'll be all right. Mm-hmm. And if it warms up real quick, they'll they'll take off growing. So. Well, I'm gonna go home and do that. Yeah, it worked really good. I. I, don't I know. have I have some egg cartons that I was gonna bring you. I'll just use those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half of a gourd works good too. See. Oh yes, yeah, I don't have that. <laughs> oh wow. So what are you growing? What are these? Uh, these are just a. Uh, these were all purchased at Kroger, uh, organic potatoes like I would cook and eat, you know, mm -hmm. and I got, I got the red and I got the gold. Mm -hmm. I don't know that if these are Yukon gold, it might be some other kind of gold potato. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but I did send away for uh, two different kinds of red potatoes and a, and a Yukon gold potato, the seed potatoes, and I think they're whole potatoes that they're sending me. But I neglected it after I sent the order off. I was like, they weren't organic potatoes. I, where did you order? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, okay. Some catalog. But, you know, I, I'll go ahead and plant them, I guess. But that's kind of against my code. I try to do everything organic. So Yeah. But I wanted to try it. The uh, other Mine red potato not. they talked about sounded interesting, so I want to taste that. The ones that I got yesterday are not organic. Right. Yeah. Right. So these but are you, all organic. But, but other, you know, we, we may have to reduce yeah. our standards a that's little right. bit this year. That's you right. know, you tell them what's going <laughs> Just to, to produce a lot of food. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. And here's the electric wheelbarrow that has changed my life and saved my back. That's Overland Power Carts. Awesome. Yeah, check them out. They got different ones, you know, different price ranges and so forth. This is, this is not the four-wheel drive model. They do have that if you have real rough terrain. Uh, this, I, I'm doing okay with this without the four-wheel drive. But you do have rough terrain. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I'm not going to take it out in the woods or anything. <laughs> Well, hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that tour of the late February garden of Daryl's. And Daryl wanted to mention his 40-year-old hat. What were you <laughs> going to say about it? Well, this is a, 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 I think this hat was made in like 1980 or 81. A friend of mine was into hat making and made this for me. Oh. And this hat's been around the world. I traveled with it to New Zealand and Australia and Jamaica and you know Canada and Mexico and stuff like that. I always traveled with this hat. I always garden with this hat if it's if the wind's blowing. I like to have it so my hair doesn't blow in my face. But uh, I don't wear a hat very often. But if I do, it's going to be this one. So it's looking a little ragged. But I'm wondering if it can go for 80 years. I'm going to see. <laughs> well, you're probably going to live for another 80 years with the way you eat and the way you grow your own food. Anyway, uh, be sure and leave a comment below if you have any questions for Daryl. And of course, we'll be doing more videos here because a lot of people enjoy. Uh, what he's doing. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure and subscribe if you're new to my channel. Click the bell for notifications. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss an upload right here on Late Bloomer. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Let's go have something. Have something? He's made me hungry. Oh, I, I'm having juice. I know. <laughs> you trying to tempt me? <laughs> right. February. Oh yeah, there's a lot more out today.
I have to take a couple into mom. She hasn't seen them yet. Yeah, it's better to do it from down here, I think. We can kind of see the bed better. 